Christians back in the fat fatherland. Witnessing the shocking reality of life in America's fattest city. The heaviest patient I've lifted is 765 pounds. Wow, well over 50 stone then. Now in England, a quarter of NHS trusts won't perform certain operations on obese patients. It's lose weight or lose out, making Dr. Christian more determined than ever to get our eating problems back on track. It's super size versus super skinny. Jeff, I'm going to pair you up with Josh. They check in to Dr. Christian's feeding clinic. I mean, there's only one thing that makes you fat, and it's food. For a 48-hour dose of each other's dire diets. That's awful. Why would anyone want sweets in the morning? And we meet a compulsive exerciser whose obsession's wrecking her health. Because it's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. rates have trebled in the UK, with almost half of all men and a third of all women overweight. And if the US is anything to go by, it's a trend which is set to get worse. That's why Dr. Christian has gone stateside, on a mission to find out if he can stem the tide. With a third of the adult population here in Evansville having a BMI of 30 or above, I'm here to find out exactly how this has become America's fattest city, and I hope pick up some lessons to stop what's happening here from happening to us back home. At the Deaconess Hospital in Evansville, he's already seen some of the worst cases, and the staff are feeling the strain. Most hospitals are having to make adjustments for an increasingly overweight population, and here in the Deaconess, it's no exception. In fact, they've taken on a team of six burly guys to lift their overweight, obese, and morbidly obese patients in and out of bed. What's kind of the heaviest patient you've ever lifted, do you think? The heaviest male patient I've lifted is 765 pounds. Wow. So that is... Uh... Well over 50 stone, then. That's heavy. So you guys are needed, aren't you? Lifting the scut. Okay, we'll be there as soon as we can. The lift team, made up of ex-firefighters and athletic trainers, are in constant demand at the Deaconess. So how many lifts would you get, say, on an average day? Uh, we get about an average of around 75 lifts uh, per day. 75? Despite the lift team's muscle power, the size of the patients often requires hydraulic equipment. How heavy can this lift manage, then? What's the maximum? Uh, the maximum on this lift is 500 pounds. Out of today's lifts, Larry is one of the lightest. How much do you weigh, Larry? Uh, I weigh 265 pounds. Mm. Larry's probably about our average. As you can see, that lift team is really needed. Moving people is not easy, and moving ill people who've had surgery or have broken limbs is particularly difficult, and there's no way nurses would be able to cope with that on their own. But Larry, although he's a beast, he's definitely not the biggest patient I've seen. They'll come a lot larger than that. It's not long before the team get their next call out, a severely obese patient with a foot injury. Ready? One, two, three is morbidly obese and the lift team have to resort to a lateral patient transfer system. This is a specialised inflatable mattress which allows the team to lift the patient on a cushion of air to slide them onto a cart. If we'd not been available for that particular lift, they would have had to have at least two additional nurses, possibly three, which would have taken them away from their regular duties. Costing $150,000 a year, the lift team doesn't come cheap. But obesity doesn't. In the UK, it costs the NHS an estimated £2.3 billion a year. But the NHS is calling time on its obese patients, with one in four health trusts barring them from certain treatments. The crisis is already here. So 
Dr. Christian's enforcing a war on weight at both ends of the scale. Dire diets destroying their health. It's eight super size versus eight super skinny. To forego their faithful feeding habits, these extreme eaters will swap diets. And who swaps with who? Dr. Christian decides. So, Jeff, I'm going to pair you up with Josh. Come on. Hey, Josh. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, yes. I cannot yeah. believe the difference. In Rotherham, that's a toothpick, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to compare this to anything. Really. I know, that's true. That's a, that's a table leg, isn't it? Josh's body was, was obviously markedly different from mine. Normally, if I was at home, I'd be taking the mickey out of him. Coming here, it's a bit of a shock to see some people that are so overweight. Yeah. I don't know much about Jeff's diet yet, um, but I'm hoping the plate isn't as big as his belly. Jeff lives on an excess of carbs and comfort food, whereas Josh's favourite food choice is sugary sweets. I'm hoping that by bringing these two extremes together, they're going to learn from each other that there is a healthy middle ground. Morning in Rotherham. And it's breakfast time for 49-year-old Jeff Milton. Hello, love. Can I have a large beast, please? There you go. I can't explain it. I can't explain why I would be this weight with the food I eat. It's a mystery. Oh, it's a mystery. I view it as quite a healthy diet, to be honest. Nothing, not too excessive. It's a but the scales disagree. Jeff weighs in at a mighty 30 stone 12 pounds. My normal lunch would be several sandwiches, probably four or five slices of bread, maybe six sometimes. Jeff loves a loaf and it doesn't stop at lunch. If there's a period where I'm having to wait for a meal, I'll have just something just to keep me going. But nothing too great, maybe just you know, a small sandwich. I don't think it is a lot of bread. I think it's just a lot of everything. Because not even a portion of fish, chips and mushy peas is enough to appease Jeff. We'd order the fish and chips or whatever it is, uh, and then I'd get an extra open small sausage, just have that as munching in the car. And if I was a bit peckish and I couldn't really wait till we got home. Jeff, however, hasn't always been this big. There's been two periods when I've lost a lot of weight. In the 1980s, I lost 10 stone. I went from 25 stone down to 15 stone. And recently, uh, I went down from about 35 stone to about 25 stone, 24 stone. But Jeff's 10 stone weight loss was short-lived. Last year, Jeff got made redundant. And if losing his job wasn't stressful enough, his wife, Joanne, fell ill. About 18 months ago, uh, I got diagnosed with having a brain tumour. Um, I had the operation and then he fell ill himself. The stress and the upset of it built up and I ended up in hospital. Uh, I'd got um, a heart murmur. Jeff's heart scare and redundancy meant suddenly he was homebound. When I found myself stuck at home for months on end, I went down the, the path of uh, putting weight on again. I think Jeff's a comfort eater and I think thought, oh, I'll have another slice of bread. I'm really suffering. My knees are killing me all the time now. I don't think they're really designed to have 30-odd stone bearing down on them. I need to lose this weight. But a lot of friends I know, who are a lot smaller than me, who have never had a weight issue, eat twice what I eat. I really don't understand the size that I am. Jeff may be in denial, but super skinny Josh Bryson understands exactly why he's the size he is. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Because this Blackpool cabaret singer may be hungry for fame, but at just nine stone ten pounds, he's not so hungry for food. Food bores me. I wish that we could get up in the morning and be able to live without food. Okay, this is my fridge. As you can see, there's not much in there. I'd get up in the morning, have a coffee. I'd then move on to lunch, which I'd generally skip. And then my evening meal 
would consist of some snacks from a vending machine. Josh may skip meals, but he makes up for it in sweets. Sugar is my life. I always need sugar in my diet to keep my energy levels going. And it's just a vicious circle of unhealthy foods. And then once your energy levels drop down, I'm, I'm back there eating unhealthy foods again because it's the only way of escaping the lack of energy that I have. If Josh could have his very own vending machine with full of crisps and chocolate, he would. is doing nothing for Josh's confidence. I hate my body. I don't like anything about it, really. I've got a pigeon chest, I've got chicken legs. The way he looks does get to him. He is paranoid about it. There's a lot of people that come up to me and say, oh, you're so skinny, or oh, we need to put some pounds on you. They think it's easy for a skinny person to put weight on. But I think it's a lot harder than even losing weight. One stone between them, these two men are battling food demons at opposite ends of the scale. But before Super Skinny takes on Super Size in the feeding clinic, Dr. Christians prescribed Jeff a Super Size wake up call in America to meet Texan Alan Yoda. I can't walk to the end of the yard without getting exhausted. I can't stand in the kitchen and cook the meal. You're sitting on the porcelain throne and you're so big that you have to try four times as hard as a normal person just to get yourself clean. Jeff's been sent to 39 Stone Allen for a large dose of his future, should he continue denying his diet. Hi, I'm Alan. I'm Jeff, nice to meet you. And to make sure Jeff takes every drop of his American medicine, Dr. Christian's also en route. I hope really this is going to give him the incentive that he needs to make sure that he gets it right this time and that that weight stays off now for the rest of his life. So, Jeff, tell me about yourself. Well, um, two years ago I lost 10 stone and uh, I was doing really well, but then the weight just seemed to go up again uh, and I've put about five stone back on. My weight fluctuated quite a bit. I actually got down almost to be normal, healthy weight. It may be hard to believe, but in 2001, Alan had his stomach stapled. I went from a high of 42 stone all the way down to a 15 or a 16 stone in about 16, 17 months. A mammoth weight loss of 27 stone. But not even bariatric surgery could stop this food fan. A few years later, Alan had munched his way out of his stomach stable, back to morbid obesity, and into a heap of health problems. I've been recently diagnosed with sleep apnea, and it's meaning when I'm trying to sleep, I can't breathe because the weight is bearing down on the lungs and I'm not getting enough oxygen. I have Barrett's disease, which is essentially, it's, it's an erosion of the esophagus and that's because I'm eating so much food that it, it won't fit in my stomach and so it's up on the esophagus and that acid is is literally not only digesting the food it's digesting me food eating Alan alive but he still can't stop the one big lesson I'm learning from all of this you've got to be right in the head you know no matter what you do to your body whether you surgically block off your stomach or whatever it's, it's all irrelevant if you still have a mind that you, 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 not, you don't care what you eat. Both Alan and Jeff know what it's like to be thinner and thrive on it. So do you hope to do it again then? I definitely hope to do it again. Yeah. But so far, neither have been able to lose the weight for good. Dr Christian wants that to change. <sighs> and unbeknown to the supersized duo, he's in town. They do that at lunch a lot. How are you? Yeah. Surprise. He did surprise me. Jeff. Yeah, hello. Alan, I'm Hi, Christian. I'm Alan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Do you guys really like food? I, I can just immerse myself in food and be lost in it. Mm. And it's a horrible, 
horrible way to deal with things. Do you agree with that? I don't know if I love food. Well, love it is the wrong term. I don't feel as though I eat a lot. I, honestly. I think a very common thing for overweight people is this idea. A lot of them say, I'm not really sure why I've put on so much weight. I don't understand why I'm so big. I eat fine, I eat healthily, I don't eat too much. Because I think there is a big element of denial. You say, I'm kind of of the opinion if you were to look in the encyclopedia under denial, you'd have my picture next to it. <laughs> That's a very honest thing to say. Yep. Dr. Christian wants to show Jeff how being in denial has damaged Alan's health. So you're rattling with the amount of pills you're taking. You have got various blood pressure things here. Fruzamide, I mean, that's a water pill. That makes you pee off extra fluid and keep your exactly. blood pressure under control. Exactly, with the edema in my legs. And with the edema in your legs. Jeff, have a look at this. If I just push hard on here for a while and then let go, Oh, you've just got a nice fingerprint in there that's going to stay there for a little while. And what I've done is just pushed all the fluid out of the tissues. It's a matter of gravity. You know, you're standing up, the fluid's down there, your heart's got to pump that up. And since it's already pumping through all the rest of this, it just can't do a it's good job of getting it out of your legs. And so you get this. And eventually, in bad cases, the skin will start to break down and you'll start to get ulcers that don't really heal very well and they, you know, they can get infected. And you get the infection, you end up losing the whole leg. If Alan doesn't sort his way out, I'm really concerned he's going to run into big trouble. His heart is already struggling to pump his blood around his body. All the swelling in his legs, the edema, the blood pressure problems, all of those are showing that his heart is basically failing um, and he's in line for a heart attack or a stroke or something worse. Only eight stone behind Alan and catching up quickly. Dr. Christian's hoping Jeff has now seen enough. See, it has been uh, challenging and there's been a, uh, that constant nagging thought in my head that, you know, I'm not too far behind him on the route. And um, I, I, I want you to acknowledge that bit because yeah. I think it's very easy to go... America, another world, another country, big yeah. person, not me, you know. And actually, it is very, yeah. very much your future yes. if, if you don't change this. Jeff's time in Texas is up. My biggest fear for Jeff is will he kind of, like I do, hide in his little cocoon and say it's not that bad, it's not that bad, and, and let the problem get worse? I've experienced some thought-provoking stuff on the trip. It's, it's hammered home the fact that there needs to be changes, yeah. It was good for both of us. Sometimes the best medicine doesn't taste good. And there's more to come because back in the UK, the feeding clinic is ready and waiting for super size and super skinny. Dr. Christian's hoping the shock of seeing each other consume their dreadful diets will spur Jeff and Josh into changing their weight ways. The two-day diet swap starts here. At six foot one, food dodger Josh weighs just nine stone ten pounds and is two stone under his ideal weight. His sugary diet lacks vital vitamins and nutrients, which can lead to a weak immune system and osteoporosis in later life. Looking at your food diary, you drink very little water and you have no fibre going in. Are you constipated? Yes, I am at the moment. You are at the moment. I haven't been for like nearly two weeks. I'm really not surprised that you're constipated because it's the fibre from fruit and vegetables that helps sort of bulk your poo up and help get it all moving along your gut. Sorry. <laughs> you can laugh, but you're going to be really bunged up and it's only going to get worse as you get older. Eating on average four loaves of fibre-filled bread a week, one would assume Jeff has no toilet trouble. But all those butty breaks make him a colossal 17 stone overweight, putting him at risk of a heart attack, stroke and type 2 diabetes. So where do you think you're going wrong currently with your diet? Oh, if I knew that answer, I suppose, I suppose I'd, uh, I'd have the secret to, uh, uh, to, to stop all this. But I mean, there's only one thing that makes you fat, and yeah. it's food. I'm just going to read out from your food diary the times during the day when you ate. Yeah. OK, listen to this. 7.30 in the morning? Yeah. 9 o'clock? Yeah. 11.45? 12 o'clock? 12.30? Yeah. 12.45? Yeah. 6.30? 7. 11. 
Yeah. Midnight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you are definitely constantly grazing. Good, good, There's good, stuff good. going yeah. in all the time. So you are definitely overeating mm -hmm. in okay. ways that I think you're not realizing. Yeah, I can't argue with the fact that I'm definitely really overeating somewhere. Really. At 30 stone, 12 pounds, we've calculated Jeff's consuming 4,464 calories a day, a thousand of which are just on snacks. Nearly Josh's entire intake of 1,300 calories a day. It's time Super Size and Super Skinny swap diets. And Jeff's day starts off reasonably well. A big bowl of cereal with semi-skim milk versus nothing. Unfortunately for you, I don't eat breakfast. Don't you? No. <laughs> I don't really like food that much. Don't you? No. Would you say that you overeat? Well, obviously, looking at the size of my trousers, I do. <laughs> so I'd be daft if I said I didn't. But I don't view that I eat excessively. He seems to be telling me that he just eats three times a day where I don't actually believe him because I don't, I don't think he'd be able to be that big if he was to eat like a normal person. So you play with it a lot, don't you? you, you... It just seems to be a never-ending bowl of cornflakes. Josh gets there in the end. But breakfast isn't over yet. Sometimes when my wife comes in later, I'll do a, a breakfast into, for a, a little bacon sandwich. Little? Buns when it's well, little, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit speechless. And it smells. It's mainly for the wife, but I'll join in because it'd be rude not to. So enjoy, tuck in. <laughs> but after that big bowl of cereal just an hour before, Josh is finding it tough tucking in. You have a standard breakfast, yes. which is a bowl of cornflakes. And you're not meant to then go... Yeah. and. I, have another breakfast. Yeah, well, I, well, as I said, I wouldn't do it every day. This is not a daily thing. I do like them. I like the, I like the taste of a bacon sandwich. Bacon and egg, bacon and tomato. Bacon, egg and tomato. His eyes were piercing. It was like he was taking it out of my hand with his eyes. What's your egg? What's your egg? <laughs> oh, that's it. Well, well done, keep it up. Jeff on empty, Josh on full. Will there be any let up at lunch? There you go, Josh. A nice sandwich for your dinner. There you go. No respite for Josh. It's <laughs> about as big as my arm. <laughs> <laughs> and for Jeff. I'm afraid I don't usually have lunch, so that's why you've got nothing. Oh, well, the deal. <laughs> it's little wonder you're thin then. And despite Josh's best efforts with Jeff's bread-based diet, he's missing his sweet fix. I still feel really tired. Like, it's just made me... I don't know, I just need some sugar. <laughs> it's no wonder Josh has crashed and burned, because when he does eat, it's sugar all the way. I would say it's quite possible that I am addicted to sugar. If I don't get my fix, I feel like a zombie. Josh eats almost three times the recommended amount of sugar every day. To help wean him off his candy crutch, Dr Christian's going to show Josh exactly what goes into his favourite fix and what these sugary sweets are doing to his body. I'm going to spoon out roughly the amount of sugar that you get through in a week from sweets only. How many of these teaspoons do you think it's going to be? Ten. About ten. 113 teaspoons of sugar. No way. 29% of Josh's measly daily calories come from sugar alone, over double the 11% guideline. What else do you think is in sweets? Gelatine. I'm making some gelatin over here for you. Oh, God. Sorry, it doesn't smell very nice. Gelatin comes from boiled up bits of animals, skin, connective tissue. God, that's disgusting. Bones. Bits of intestine to help stick those yummy jelly sweets all together. How are you feeling now looking at this? I feel really sick. And finally, a few last ingredients to give the sweets that enticing, glossy finish. Lots and lots and lots of oil. And then, can't move the wax. Exactly the same stuff that you find in car bonnet polish. So we're going to put a load of that in. And also 
beeswax. So I'm just going to scrape you some nice beeswax shavings into there. Trying to give that a good final mix. I'll tell you what the weird thing is. What? I can actually smell the sweets coming from there. Because that is exactly what they're made out of. Quite horrific, isn't it? Just a bit. With Josh suitably disgusted, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. This actually is a reasonably healthy heart. A bit of fat around the heart is fine, is normal. What's the difference with this one? It just looks covered in fat. The problem with very high sugary diets is that actually it increases the levels of blood fats, fat inside you. And that fat is very high risk for developing diseases. So just because you say that you are skinny doesn't mean your organs are all enveloped in internal fat and it doesn't mean that you're not at risk of developing heart disease and diabetes through your diet. That I expected that because I was young and because I was skinny, I was immune to all the major illnesses, but obviously not. I'm really shocked. I couldn't ever go near one of them again. It's not nice. Habitual grazer Jeff Milton and sweet-toothed food skipper Josh Bryson are on day one of their diet swap. Four o'clock, and for the first time, there's something on the menu for Jeff. So it's a coffee with three sugars versus two ham sandwiches. And this is just another snack. Well, this was... Um, well, basically, yes, if it would be a... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this is your fourth meal of the day. What? And we've still got tea time to go as uh, well. Apparently so, yes. How is that possible? How is that possible that someone can eat so much in one day? Keep going. You'll be all right. I can't do it. I actually can't do it. I can't do it. And it didn't seem that much during the day. I dread to think what the next is, because I honestly can't remember. I just hope uh, we didn't go to the chippy that night, because it'll kill him off. Jeff actually had a cheesy pizza and salad, which wouldn't have been too bad if he hadn't scoffed such big snacks earlier on. And it verses chicken, burger and fries, Jeff's first solids of the day. Well, actually, I, I don't feel very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, finally eaten, so I do feel a bit better now. I just took away that gnawing hunger, which was sort of irritating me. And at nine o'clock, Jeff gets a taste of Josh's sweet tooth. But how's Josh feeling after five meals in one day? I think I've definitely surprised myself today at the amount I've eaten. I haven't had that up and down of my, when I had my sugar intake. It, I haven't been up one minute and then crashing down, having to top it back up today. So I'm pretty proud of myself. Josh may be patting himself on the back, but day one isn't over yet. Josh, Josh, you away. I've got a bowl of cornflakes for you. Are you joking? No. Nope. There you go. So it is small bowl, it's not on the normal large size. It's, but it's uh, just a bowl of cornflakes. It's one o'clock in the morning. Right, I'm just going to get it done with. And I hate, I'm hating this. Too full and too angry to sleep. I can't. Stay in bed. I can't stay in bed. I need to go out. Josh has made it clear how unimpressed he is with Jeff's diet. Day two of the diet swap. For breakfast, it's four slices of wholemeal toast versus a bag of sweets. And Jeff's turn to bite back. The full pack of jellied sweets. That's awful. No, sweets? Why would anyone want... Sweets in the morning. 
But Josh also has something to say. I mean, you had six meals yesterday. Hmm. Six meals. I don't understand how someone could eat that at one o'clock in the morning. Wasn't you satisfied from your tea? It wasn't, it wasn't the satisfied job. It was just, I was watching the telly or whatever it was that night and I had it, you know. So you didn't need it? No. Didn't need it. Don't need half the stuff, you know. It's just too much, the volume's too much, the quantities are too much, the frequency's too much. Hands up. And I, I, I can see that now from the way I've been throwing food at you for the last two days. What's it like to eat sweets at this time in the morning? Are you meant to have energy? Because I just feel... <laughs> Do you? I feel less energetic now than when it started. I feel really embarrassed. <laughs> Seeing each other's struggle has made both Super Size and Super Skinny realise they need to change. But for the 1.6 million people in the UK living with an eating disorder, change can seem impossible. We've been following six people who hope by sharing their own personal stories, they'll inspire others to seek help. Laura is a 22-year-old fashion student addicted to exercise. My current exercise routine is one that I've made myself. It basically involves arm exercises, sit-ups, kind of crunches and leg exercises as well. I also go to the gym when I'll just run for a long time and then I'll use the weights as well. When I don't do the exercises that I set myself out to do, I feel guilty about it. I just feel like something bad's going to happen if I don't do it. Exercising obsessively is a common symptom with eating disorders. It's seen as a compensatory way of burning off calories. The need to exercise can become compulsive, taking over one's life. She's quite secretive with her exercising, but we didn't notice it probably for a couple of years. Now you can really see it. It's really quite obsessive. Exercise isn't Laura's only obsession. She consumes a measly 600 calories a day. That's 1,400 less than the recommended daily amount for women and well under the amount her body needs for the exercise she does. This has been going on for five years. Things weren't going the way I thought they were going to be. I went and just got a really monotonous job, so me and another girl that I was working with started trying out, like, fad diets like drinking protein shakes, eating a blueberry every 15 minutes. I went back to college after that. By that time, I was totally consumed by it. Laura's diet is mainly a mix of cereal with water and energy drinks. In combination with her extreme exercising, this has had a severe effect on her body. I'm always cold, I'm always tired. I've got a thyroid problem now, so I'm on medication now for that potentially for the rest of my life. When Laura hit seven stone and her hair began to thin and fall out, she got professional help. After I went to see my GP, I was referred on to a psychiatric nurse for CBT, which is Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. And it's basically just to address what would maybe trigger you to feel upset or anxious about what you're going to eat. I'm proud of her for like what she is doing, just trying hard and trying to get better, and that's the main thing. Back at the feeding clinic, it's the Last Supper, and a porker portion of shepherd's pie and peas versus pepperoni pizza. Wow, our last meal. I am a little bit shocked. Um, before we came downstairs to the dining room, yeah. And I was thinking, I'm actually hungry mm. for food, not for sweets, for food. Mm. And that's like an experience that I've never felt before. Say you're 20, what, 22, 23, it's, it's a big thing, that, isn't it? If you've never really felt hungry for food before. So, well, in that case, it's congratulations. Josh is ploughing through his shepherd's pie, no problem. And the last 48 hours have had a positive effect on Jeff's appetite too. I see I'm struggling with this. <laughs> now that's what you call a super skinny beating a super size. Diet swap done. All that remains is a final word from Dr. Christian. Chaps, we've come to the end of your time here, sadly. 
And this is the best bit, really. These are your diet plans. There's yours. And Josh, I want to see you coming back healthier, happier, eating properly with a little bit of weight on. Doable? Oh, yes. Yes. And Jeff, completely the opposite. <laughs> a little bit of weight off. Hopefully, yes. But I think, I really do think you guys can both do it. I think you've been shocked in many ways throughout this, haven't you? And just remember those shock factors when you're slipping. Jeff will be on 2,500 calories a day, with portion sizes, fatty foods, bread and meat significantly reduced. It's a change in lifestyle, not a diet, ensuring the weight comes off and stays off. And Josh will be on 3,000 calories a day. He needs to eat regularly and replace sweets with slow-releasing energy foods, like wholemeal bread, breakfast cereals, pasta, rice, fruit and veg. My attitude has changed towards the way I look at food. I can honestly say, hand on heart, I will never ever go near a sweet again. I think it's finally hit home that the amount of food that I eat is, is putting on the pounds, so I've got to uh, now get it off once and for all. It's been nice meeting you. You too, that's it. A couple of months. There you go. Take care. No worries. Bye. Dr. Christian will be catching up on their progress later. In his fight to change the UK's increasingly dire food habits, Dr. Christian's been looking to America for a snapshot of our own future. I'm in the epicenter of the US obesity crisis, Evansville, Indiana, officially America's fattest city, to investigate why Americans are getting bigger and bigger and to find out what we in the UK can learn from where America has gone so very wrong. Worryingly in the US, over 12 million children and adolescents are obese. And in England, a third of kids aged 11 to 15 are now overweight or obese. So to help us get to grips with the issue, Dr. Christian's visiting the Family Centre at the Deaconess Hospital, who offer advice to overweight children and their families. Desiree, you weigh 118.2 pounds today. Is that good or not so good? It's getting better. Well, it's actually up six pounds from last time you were here in November. Being overweight when young significantly increases the risk of developing type 2 diabetes, asthma and high blood pressure. But the responsibility for change doesn't just lie with the children. Why are you finding this so hard, do you think? Just changing, period, is, can be hard. She does the same thing that I do. That's yeah. probably sugar drinks she drinks. Oh, how many sugary six drinks do you drink? Come on then, tell us. Probably about six a day. <gasps> really? Full fat More sugary more. drinks? Mm -hmm. The trouble is, what you do is what mm. your kids are going to see and, and they're going to follow suit because they're going to think, well, if mum does it, that must be all right, aren't they? So it's really important that you, you change as well for your kids. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really hard, though. Staff at the Family Centre aren't the only ones trying to combat the obesity epidemic at grassroots level. Across town, Sadia Brim runs the Pirouette Project. So tell me a little bit about this initiative. We came to this school and we started this after-school program with movement and nutrition and ballet. And, and how's it, it been received? Has it they been hard work it. or, or not at, at all? First, at first, it was tough getting kids interested, but now that it's picked up, there we have a waiting list. The first part of the class focuses on nutrition. What does it look like we're going to eat? Pineapple. pineapple. If I buy a pineapple and I buy a bag of cookies, and they're both pretty sweet, right? Should I get cookies or should I get pineapple? Pineapple! Yes. The kids are learning what's healthy for them, but for some, old habits die hard. My favorite food is at this restaurant, and it's called a Happy, a happy Meal. I know what a Happy Meal is, and I know which restaurant that is, too. Yet by exposing them to the right foods, they're beginning to embrace a change. Is that good? Yeah, is it sweet? Nice? healthy snack, it's time for an entire hour of plies and pirouettes. And five, six, seven, eight. And go up and back, the very top of your back. Go up and flat back all the way down. 
have to say it was a complete delight. And it's so heartening to see kids volunteering to take part in these sorts of activities because these are the next generation. These are the kids that are growing up in a society where being large and overweight is actually normal. And we need to focus on our kids and make them aware of the health risks of being overweight with exactly these sorts of activities. They were having fun and they were doing some serious hard exercise and that's exactly what they need to be doing. It's been 11 weeks since bread-loving Jeff Milton and sweeterholic Josh Bryson left the feeding clinic. It's time to find out if they've stuck to their healthy eating plans. Slightly nervous, looking forward to seeing officially what I've done. I've got a little target in my head which I want to go for and hopefully I'll achieve that. That'll be a nice surprise today, yeah. So how's it been, Jeff? It's been good. I've not been hungry at any time. Um, I've, I've ate well and I feel as though I'm losing weight. When you were in the feeding clinic, um, there was possibly a slight sense of denial or, or not really understanding why the weight was going on and where you were yeah, going wrong. Yeah. What do you think about that now? I was doing it wrong. And I, and I wasn't accepting that I was doing it wrong. And the effect of that was the way. Well, that's good. I mean, you, you, you had a lot of work to do, essentially, didn't you? And particularly up here, I think, thinking about why and really yeah. accepting that you weren't always getting it right. And yeah. that's a difficult thing to do is, yeah. you know, and it sounds like you've done it. And I hope it's working well. We'll find out. I'm feeling apprehensive um, about what's to come. Hopefully, things will be good. Josh, how have you been? I don't eat any sweets anymore. I suppose that's that's one pro. Not at all. I eat at least three meals a day um, with with snacking in between just to put on the extra the extra weight. And how do you feel because of all this? I feel alert, awake, healthy. Everything that that was negative before has just completely changed into a positive. And is this something you're going to keep up now? Completely. Yeah. yeah. Time for the gents to be reunited. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Very well. <laughs> how the devil are you? Yeah. OK, how are you? you? Yeah, no, right. thanks. How are you doing? Yes. Yeah. I, I, can, uh, I can instantly see a, a major improvement. Can you? Oh, good stuff, yes. Yeah, look as though you put a bit of bulk on. It's a, you know, you, you're following the face. That's what my friends were saying to yeah. me, actually. It's, it's all, all yeah. come here. Yeah, but it all come here a little bit. But it, well. Oh, you've got a belly on your way. Bellies of the world unite. Yeah, well done. Well done. <laughs> right, gang. Here I am. Happy to see each other again? Yeah, brilliant. Yes. You're talking about you see us put it on in his face. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. How much would you have liked to put on? I would have liked around half a stone. I'm afraid you've come just short of putting on a stone. No way. 13 pounds you've put on. Astounding. Oh my God. That's amazing. Astounding. And not only that, you've added three inches to your chest. And you've added two inches around your arms. So it's fantastic. Really well done. Well done, mate. I love it. <laughs> Amazing. What would you have hoped for, Jane? Um, a, a couple of stone. I think we can probably do a little bit better than that. Excellent. You've lost two stone and five pounds. Excellent. Oh, I'm pleased with that. Not only that, but you've lost something else as well. You've lost eight inches around your tummy. Well, that would explain the baggy trousers, I That would explain why you're having to walk yes. holding your trousers. Yes. And that's amazing. I couldn't have asked, actually, for better results from either of you. You've done me proud. Thank you. Two stone, five pounds. Really pleased with that. That's, that's, that's more than what I would have expected. I actually didn't think I was even going to get four pounds, let alone nearly a stone. Also, eight inch off my waist. I mean, that's another good thing as well. So, yeah, excellent. Really pleased with that. 